We have a busy show coming up. If you're just joining us now, Rangers getting their fifth straight home win. We're going to talk about that with the former Ranger. Stefan Mateau is in studio today. We've got lots to cover, packed show, and we're going to just kick things off right now with that. Obviously, it was a great game for the Rangers there. Shootout win. I just was reading uh, Adam Fox. The last time he took a shootout goal was in his junior hockey days. So not too shabby for him. What are your impressions of this team so far? Well, they're finding ways to win this year. It's amazing. They don't play the last three, four games that I've been at the Garden. They don't play, maybe, maybe they don't play their best hockey mm -hmm. games, but overall they find ways to win. And they, uh, their best players, uh, they find ways to score. Kreider scored again tonight, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the goal, goaltender is still making some great saves. And they, uh, that's a sign of a good team, a championship team. And uh, so far, so good. But they're exciting to, uh, to the fans. Are, they, they love the team this year. So. Oh, absolutely. And I'm one of them. So uh, oh, yeah. I'm a big fan. You're yeah. a fan. OK, 30 goals for Chris Kreider. We were talking about him. You're, you were a big, strong player You know when you were playing as well. What do you notice about the way he's scoring these goals and just the confidence we're seeing from him this year? Well, he's playing on a good line, and he's uh, the confident level that he has this year. It's in uh, when the puck are going. I never experienced that in my life. The most I ever score was 19 goals, but they. Uh, he's uh, he's a, everyone's been telling him over the years that he's a huge power forward with a lot of speed. And uh, this year, he he's paying the price, and obviously he enjoyed coming to the rink and play. And uh, He's a, that's a big reason why the team is on the top of the league right now, and uh, it's fun to watch. He's, uh, he's passionate about the, ge the game this year, and uh, you can tell he's having a lot of fun. You mentioned being a fan yourself now. You're beloved by Rangers fans here. When you come back to New York, do those memories just come flooding back as well? It gets better and better, and it's uh, the level of love that, uh, that I have with the fans is just keeps on building. And I like to bring people who's never experienced that in their lives. So the last three games, I brought different people at the garden. And not to show off, it's just mm. to, to, to make them realize what my life is about the last uh, 15, 20 years. And the fans, they are, I was signed autograph tonight and I was taking pictures with the fans. And they, it doesn't matter what, what age they come seven-year-old, 80-year-old, and they come in and said, thank you very much for the moment. Right. And uh, I had one of the best mentors in hockey in Adam Graves over the years, and I've been watching Adam, uh, how he handles himself at the garden. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job, and I, I still want to learn how to react with the fans because mm -hmm. being shy myself doesn't sure. look like it today, but I've been shy. I, don't, I didn't know how to react with the fans, but Adam really, without knowing it, he really helped me out uh, how to handle with the staff at the Garden and the fans at the Garden. Well, you are obviously part of such a special team. The Rangers meant so much. That Rangers team specifically meant so much to the fans. So when you get that reception from people who are maybe older, like you mentioned, who are watching, you know, in their prime, what does that mean to you? What does that feel like? It means the world. The, um, because it's maybe not real for me when I come to the garden because it's the pictures and the autographs and the loves. But when I go back home, it's normal life for me and uh, it has to be a normal life. But it's, uh, it's all, I've met probably 25,000 people who told me they were at the game seven and they only allow like 19,000 people <laughs> at that game. So, uh, but every time it seems like people, um, text each other said if you ever meet Stefan Matteau one of these days tell him where which section they set the row and the seat and it's a secret thing they, they come up wow. to me and goes I was at your game because they call it my game and I was sitting in section row and seat over over and over and I get that every time I step at Madison Square Garden yeah yeah, we actually have the goal call from that game seven. I'm sure that you have heard it maybe once or two times, uh, but Thousands an of incredible, times. incredible call. Uh, when you hear that, though, still, and we're going to try to play it in a second. Actually, I think we have it right now. Let's see. Let's listen to it. The piece off for the Devils plays it cross ice into the far corner. Matteau swoops in to intercept. Matteau behind the net. Swings it in front. He scores! Matteau! 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 Look at brother right there. He threw the pucks away, and I wish I could have that puck. Is that and puck still missing? I don't know. I never heard of it. And, oh. uh, it's one of those. They got to put uh, out a search request for that puck. But what a great call! Incredible. And how we uh, 
I, we're friends. I live in Florida now, and uh, how we live in Florida. Yeah. I had dinner with him two weeks ago, and uh, we thank each other for the moments every year. May 27th, we text each other. Thank you very much for the moment on my side and on his side. And uh, how we, by the way, uh, he's battling, uh, he's battled some uh, issue with the cancer, and he's he's winning it. So. Uh, Good to see him, and uh, That's but great. that moment's been 27 years. Yeah, and you and still get goosebumps. I still have goosebumps because now I have to share with the kids in my programs and uh, in the Bronx. And I, the reason why I'm here, it's because of that moment. If ticking in with a score, probably I would not be here in this seat. But I, I'm glad that he didn't touch the puck. And <laughs> uh, I joke about it, but I, I was so happy for us to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't, I wasn't sure that I scored the goal. Mm. I didn't. Never, I never shared that. I was just happy I saw the red light, and I went crazy because we were going, our team were going to the Stanley Cup Finals. And, and that wasn't the first. I mean, that was the moment that most people obviously connect yeah. with you, but that wasn't the first big moment you had in that postseason, Game 3 as well. Yeah. What do you remember from that? It was a crazy game. It was another must-win for us, and then... And there was an instant, we, I was on the ice for a minute and a half, and they keep telling you, put your stick down. And uh, sure enough, a typical Stefan Metro goal, it's not a pretty goal, but that one was like, you see, I put my stick down, and I'd like to tell my kids it was barred down, but it was on the ice, <laughs> and Marty Brother could not see the puck, and it went through some legs, and it was my biggest moment in my life at that time, and I, I was ready to pack it in, and. Uh, Thankfully that uh, Zella Pukin scored with seven <laughs> seconds to go yeah. because I was still would not be it. A yeah. lot of things happened. Of if Mike Richter would not have stood on his head that night, uh, a lot of, uh, I'm fortunate to be on that team. I'm very grateful, but they, we, I was on the best team in the, in the world. Tell me what Mike Keenan's belief in you meant to you at that point in your career when you, know, you weren't always um, as self-confident as, as yeah. you would like to be. He was tough. I had him in Chicago before, but we lost to Pittsburgh in the finals. And Mike, uh, every, the, the rumors, it's, they're, they're through. He's very, very tough on players. And he tested me a few times. He was really hard. But when I got traded to uh, the Rangers in 94, at the very last minute, because Mike really pushed mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, Neil Smith to make the trade. And uh, first night uh, that we got together, I said, Steph, I believe in yourself. Uh, we are here. Don't you don't have to play the hero. Just be on a team and have fun and enjoy the moment. And sure enough, I wasn't sure which line I was going to play on that night, uh, that for the rest of the season. That when, but first game in Calgary, when I saw my name with Kovalev and Larmer mm. on the second line, uh, that was a big relief for me. And then, all right, things going to be all right. I scored that night in Calgary. The very next night in Edmonton. But the uh, the rest is history. But he, even though some games I didn't have a good game. Game one against the Devils, he could have switched because we had mm -hmm. such a deep team. He could have switched Matteau to with somebody else on the left side, but he kept putting the same lineup over and over and over. And as a player, you feel good about yourself when the, the coach, mm -hmm. especially Mike Keenan that year, really trusted me and that made me feel. And I'm so glad that I, I was able to deliver it for him and for the, the team also. Absolutely. That belief that you needed, you know, in yourself, it seemed like he had that even when you necessarily weren't performing to the best of your abilities right away. You yeah. eventually got there and hey, that worked out pretty well.